Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, it's gonna be a short video, straight to the point, I'm going to be covering chlamydial infections. Before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video, you're gonna love it, so press the like button now so you don't forget. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Also, another way you can support is by sharing my video, share it on your social media platform, platform or with a classmate or a colleague. All right, guys, so let's get started. Chlamydia infections. And as you can see right here, I wrote bacteria because you have to remember, this is not a viral infection. This is a bacterial infection, okay? So you already know the fact that it's a bacterial infection, we know it's going to be treated with antibiotics. But let's get into it. Chlamydia, this is transmitted through exposure of sexual fluids during vaginal, anal, or oral sex, a value um, ejaculation does not have to occur for this infection to be transmitted. Ejaculation does not have to occur in order for that infection to be transmitted from one person to another. Infection with chlamydia does not confer immunity. That means if you get chlamydia, then you get antibiotics for it. It doesn't mean that you're now, um, what's the word I'm looking for, that you 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 won't ever get chlamydia again. You can keep getting reinfected over and over and over. That's what they mean by that. So infection with chlamydia does not confer immunity to future infections. This means people who've been treated for chlamydia infection can be reinfected. Signs and symptoms of chlamydia infection. Persons with chlamydia infection may have no symptoms. However, if symptoms develop in men, they might experience pain with urination or with urethral discharge. Symptoms in women, they can have cervicitis, inflammation of that cervical area. Mucopurulent discharge with pus, bleeding, dysuria, and pain with intercourse. Look at some complications. Pelvic inflammatory disease, and guys, you know patients who um, have PID, they're at risk of um, miscarriages, they're at risk of um, st sterility, not, not sterility, but uh, not being able to keep a pregnancy or even get pregnant, okay? PID, the risk of developing PID increases with repeated chlamydial infection. So the more times that the patient's infected with chlamydia, the higher their risk of getting pelvic inflammatory disease. Let's go back to pelvic inflammatory disease because I want to show something to you. Look at this. Pelvic inflammatory disease can damage the fallopian tubes. Remember, that's where the eggs pass through. It can damage the fallopian tubes and increases a woman's risk for an ectopic pregnancy. That's a pregnancy outside of the uterus. Guess what? Can a, can, can a fetus be viable? Can a pregnancy be, be viable outside of the uterus? Absolutely not. Okay, so that's very important. Uh, and so the more episodes of uh, PID, which you can get with more repeated exposure to chlamydia, the more likely a woman will experience infertility. I was right the first time. All right, let's keep it moving. So diagnostic tests, the NAAT. Now this can be performed on the endocervical or vaginal swabs for women, urethral swabs for men, and urine for both men and urine. Urine for both men and urine. Urine for both men and women. And usually that is the test that's done the most. We just get a urine sample and test for chlamydia. Interprofessional care. Look at this. The preferred treatment for chlamydial infection is going to be a single dose of azithromycin or doxycycline for seven days. That is important. NCLEX expects you to know that. And there are not too many medications that NCLEX expects you to know the actual dosage or the duration, right? Most questions on NCLEX when it comes to pharmacology, they expect you, they expect you to know like what medication would most likely be ordered for a certain disease process. They expect you to know, you know, adverse effects and nursing interventions for that medication, but there are very few medications that NCLEX actually expects you to know either the dosage or the duration. This is one of them. So you need to know this when it comes to chlamydial infection that we expect for them to either get azithromycin or doxycycline for seven days. There's more. You're going to instruct the patient to stay away from sexual intercourse for seven days after treatment and until all of the sexual um, uh, partners have completed their full course of treatment. Why? Because you can get reinfected. 
You're going to advise the patients to return if their symptoms come back. Now, doxycycline, also known as vibromycin, patients on this drug should avoid any unnecessary exposure to sunlight. This is important. I think I told you guys about this. That was a famous test question on NCLEX has been seen before that the patient was on this medication. And what in their history would be a concern to the nurse? And when you looked in the patient's chart, you saw that they were a runner. Well, when you're on this medication, can you be out in the sun? Should you be out in the sun? Absolutely not. So that's something that you'd have to let the physician know, like, hey, you know, this patient's a runner, they're out in the sun a lot. Is this a medication you want to keep so you can teach a patient, well, for this time, you can't be out in the sun that much, right? What else? Teach them to avoid antacid, iron products, or dairy products. Why? These three can decrease the absorption of this antibiotic and make that antibiotic not as effective as it needs to be. So that is very important to teach a patient. Pregnant women should not take doxycycline. That is another biggie. NCLEX absolutely expects you to know this. Before this is prescribed to um, a woman of childbearing age, you better have an HCG test and it better be negative. Any sexual partner within the preceding 60 days of diagnosis or onset of symptoms needs to be treated. You're going to teach parents, um, patients to return for testing three months after treatment to be sure that they have not been reinfected. You're going to encourage the patients to use condoms or barrier methods consistently and correctly every time that they have sex because they absolutely can be reinfected. And remember, with every reinfection is an increased risk of PID in women. The CDC recommends ex expedited partner therapy, EPT. That means that the healthcare provider can provide medications or prescriptions to the person's partner who has an STI without them being examined. And this is one of the very few diseases and disorders that uh, CDC actually encourages and they, they promote that someone get a medication ordered to them without being physically assessed. Why? We know that they're having sex with somebody who was uh, infected. So it makes sense. What did I write down here? Because reinfection rate is so high, partners need to be treated. One more thing I want to bring to your attention. Let's go back over here. Chlamydial infections. Uh, remember the test, the NAAT or... Um, also, what's done, what's done most often is the urinalysis. However, the NAAT is more specific to chlamydia. And management, again, it's going to be a single dose, seven days of either azithromycin, your Zithromax, or doxycycline, your vibromycin, okay? Instruct the patient to be abstinent from sexual intercourse for seven days. Look at this key word, after completing treatment. So remember, the patient's taking treatment for seven days, but even after they've completed that week of treatment, they, a whole week after they've completed the antibiotics, they must abstain from sexual intercourse and all partners should be treated. And guys, that's your chlamydia in a nutshell. Please let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover next. I'm going to make this a series because I think I'm going to cover all of the uh, STIs. But if there's something you'd like to see me cover that I haven't done so already, please feel free. Let me know in the comment section. I can't respond to everyone, but I do see your comments. I am taking notes and I have a running list going. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. And you guys will catch me on the next video.